Hey all, Scott here, and it is another day with Art of the Genre. We are going to be taking a look at L3, Deep Dwarven Delve, which is the third module in the Lendor Isle series, done by Lynn Lakofka, produced by Wizards of the Coast as the last first edition Advanced Dungeons and Dragons module ever made. Well, that was in 1999. Uh, obviously, they didn't realize that the OSR was going to go to town on that one and make a lot more of the uh, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons modules. But as far as I know, it's the last one that Wizards of the Coast ever made. So I guess they got that right. Um, anyway, uh, let's get into this one. It's a pretty cool uh, module. It's kind of a collector's item. It came out in, I guess, the Silver... Uh, anniversary edition. Uh, it lists it as Lynn uh, turning in these um, notes in 1979. Now remember, um, L2 came out in 1983 and L1 came out in 1981. It's possible that Lynn turned them in uh, in 79 and that's why it was shelved. Uh, I, I'm not positive on that, uh, but that seems a little early in the concept. Uh, but I guess it's possible um, that it could be 20 years or they're just trying to, you know, relative, make those numbers relative. Uh, anyway, this uh, we're going to get into the artwork here first for this one. Um, the cover is actually done uh, by Wayne Reynolds. Check it out. That is the first color piece uh, that Wayne Reynolds ever did for Wizards of the Coast. Um, and he would go on to be quite famous. Uh, for Wizards, as he defined uh, many things in 3rd edition and 3.5, but really he became the cover artist for almost all the books, the core books, for 4th edition Dungeons & Dragons. And as he was doing that, he was also being the co primary cover artist for everything for Pathfinder. So he had two me mega systems out, which he covered uh, uh, at the same time. I, no one's ever done that before. Uh, it's quite an accomplishment for Wayne. I, I've talked to him about this particular cover and he absolutely can't stand it uh, because it was one of his first pieces and he thinks it's not very good. I think it's great. Uh, I love Wayne's work. Some people don't like it. I love it. Uh, he also did all the interiors uh, for this piece. So he did every last bit of artwork in it. I'm going to let you, I'm just going to stream through these interiors here. Take a look. I, you know, I love him. Uh, I think he's also got a concept here where he's going through and utilizing the same characters. That's something that we haven't seen a lot of to this point. Um, at least nothing that comes to mind. A lot of the art is spot work um, throughout that, that time, uh, time period. So you don't get to see a real feel for the same characters in it, which would then, this is 1999. So then it would lend itself to Iconics as they came out and you start seeing them run through adventure after adventure after adventure, especially in Pathfinder. Um, so there's that. Um, the, uh, the, the adventure itself we'll, we'll get into. It's, <clears throat> it's kind of weird. Um, Len, as I've talked about in the last two, that would be L1 and L2, uh, he is a master at developing uh, backgrounds uh, for the setting. Um, it's just an absolute master. If you want something done uh, where you know everything that there is to know about something, uh, do you know get get Len to do it. Uh, he's fantastic at it. Um, and this adventure is kind of anathema to everything that Len stands for. Len does the um, introduction to this one. It's a full page on the interior, but really his introduction isn't about this module as much as it's just about his early days gaming uh, at Gen Con and knowing Gygax and how the game kind of developed. It's a neat read, but it, it, it doesn't um, speak to this particular adventure. You know, if I was just going to go out on a limb here, I would say Lynn doesn't have a fantastic uh, enjoyment of this adventure because it's not really his. This adventure is very, very base. Uh, you can see as you go through it that it was probably taken off of just some notes thrown together. Um, and it is, if I had to define this adventure, it would be an unfulfilled promise. Wizards of the Coast in 1999, after buying TSR, um, they had all the money they needed 
to do something absolutely fantastic. And they did not deliver. Not that this is a bad module. It's just not what it should have been. They could have brought Len in from Long Beach uh, and, you know, taken him up to Renton and uh, had him fill this out with some of their best designers. Uh, it's also interesting to me that you had um, people in the TSR pit at the time, like Jeff Easley, who had done the artwork for uh, L2 on the interior. He's still working at TSR 20 years later, uh, and you could have had him revisit uh, the Lindor Isles, but they chose not to. Uh, the module itself, uh, it's only 23 pages. It's very thin. It doesn't have a removable cover. It doesn't have interior maps, uh, blue maps. It doesn't have uh, the mapping systems where you get a town. Uh, you uh, Lake Farman, which is really Garretton, I guess they've renamed for this particular one. Um, you, you don't have anything from it. You could have even reused those. These are the kind of maps that you're going to get for the Dwarven Delve. Um, there's not a lot to them. I mean, it's kind of cool if you're looking how, I guess, how dwarves might set something up to uh, make mines, but otherwise, um, it's not a lot to it. It is 40 rooms um, on three levels of a dungeon. It is um, absolutely, positively murder hobo friendly. So if you like murder hobo, uh, which I don't believe Lynn did, um, this is it. Uh, so the, again, the cover is not removable, no color interior maps, no town maps. Um, there are no big NPC descriptions, which is a, that, that is the telltale mark of a Lynn Lakofka module. And there are no tables. If you don't have a table, don't put Lynn's name on it <laughs> because that dude is going to have some cool tables. Um, so that being said, um, I don't know. It's, it's a pretty straightforward adventure, uh, the, there is a secret mine, mining mithril, where guess what the dwarves did? They delved too deeply. <laughs> so go figure. Uh, and Len even talks about Lord of the Rings a little bit in his intro. So obviously the the the, the dwarves delving too deeply is going to come into play. They don't uh, unleash a Balrog, but they do uh, come into contact with the shrine of Belzebul, uh, the Arc Devil. Uh, and he's the one that corrupts things here, turns the mine into a murder, pl a, a place of murder where he is um, trying to design a way to gather enough forces that he can take over the Lindor Isles. Makes sense. Um, and he murders all the dwarves here, except for one, a cleric who goes crazy and begins to worship him uh, and then starts raising all of his fallen comrades because he's so distraught about it. Um, into the into undead and then of course there are gnolls and orcs and stuff that come in that rally to the banner that this is the reason that uh restenford and uh lake farm and garretton know about this uh, is because uh one of their towns was raised um uh, by these forces who normally just do little raids and a ranger came out uh discovered the uh, the location of this un, uh, yet to unknown mine, and then the the player characters are kind of uh, you know forced into going out and taking a look at it. The first level of this dungeon is basically just standard uh, a, a dungeon delve. It's not big. It's almost like a walkthrough, and it's going to have your um, your orcs and gnolls and stuff like that. Pretty easy stuff if the characters are coming in. This is from levels what is it, Thir three to six. So uh, they should be able to deal with that handedly. And then if you go into the second and third level, you're going to get into it with devils. And the biggest uh, problem here is a iron golem that was uh, created. And it's going to be a pain in the ass for six level characters. Uh, plain and simple. Um, there are three really cool magic items at the end. Uh, one of them is evil, but nevertheless, they are cool items. Um and those can be discovered here. And the end game here would be to um, destroy the shrine uh, and stop the incursion of the devil um, and therefore save uh, that section of Lindor. This lends itself very well as, a, as an aside adventure to the Lindor Isles. Uh, it works more as a dungeon crawl um, that you could just go out to from the Isles. 
uh, or from Restonford when you're when you're working with uh, those adventures or even at Assassin's Knot. Uh, it gives you just just more play here into the aisles. So it works in the concept of the setting. Um, it just doesn't have the feel or the verve of a real uh, Len Lakofka module, which I find sad. Um, uh, if you utilize the other things that he's done in the series, uh, then I think you'll find this a fun adventure. Um, but it falls a little flat because it is real. It really just becomes apparent. It's just somebody took some notes, uh, transcribed them kind of out in a 23-page uh, adventure, which is really about 20 pages because of the interior maps, um, and then just put a stamp on it of AD&D &D and threw it at, uh, in a you know in an anniversary set. Yeah. Uh, if it's really the, an anniversary set, it should have been special. I don't think this is special. It is rare, so it's expensive to get your hands on. Um, but um, otherwise, it's not an adventure that's going to blow you away or you think, that, well, they went out with a bang for uh, for first edition AD&D. Uh, they did not uh, on this particular adventure. Again, utilizing the set, good job. Uh, just isn't alone. Eh, it's okay. Um, so... That, that's uh, all I really have to say to finish up the uh, L series of standard adventures. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, it's, it's something that if you can get your hands on, I do suggest it. So remember that. Um, otherwise, uh, I hope you'll subscribe. Uh, and uh, we are also running a uh, kick, uh, an Indiegogo right now for Folio Black Label number three. Hopefully you'll check that out. I'll have it in the description. And... Uh, that's it. So otherwise, great gaming!